don't you worry, don't you cry, I can promise, it gets better in time, keep your head up, keep your shine, hold my hand up, it gets better in time. I'm Marie, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, welcome, babe. Just hit the subscribe button because I've got something for you. Your girl's on a life journey, a fitness journey, a faith journey. So I feel like I have a little bit of something for everybody. So if you are on a similar journey like I am, this is the page for you. If you're returning, hey besties, it's so good to see you guys again. So as you can tell, we're getting into a meal prep video and I can't believe it. I can't believe we're back with these videos. Honestly, I'm not prepared, okay? The fact that I'm now meal prepping means that I'm going back into the school building and your girl is stressed. But the grind never stops. So today I'm doing a quick and easy meal prep for you guys. I'm still doing my batch prepping where I prep components and then I throw stuff together throughout the week and I show you what I'm eating throughout the week. I find that this method just works best for me because now it gives me a little bit of variety. As you guys who are returning know, I've been having a really hard time eating the same thing every single day. So I've been really loving the fact that I can just kind of pick and choose and select from items that I've already made and make a new meal with it daily. It's just making my life so much easier. Just some things I wanna cover. First things first, we already know the disclaimer. I am not a professional. I am not a nutritionist, dietitian, none of it. I myself am personally working closely with my nutritionist and my trainer to get my nutrition like really down pat this year. But I just wanna bring to your attention that I am just here to give you guys creative food inspiration and meals to add to your repertoire because I know how healthy eating could be. It gets boring, it gets like repetitive. So I'm just trying to give you some fun ideas to add to your meal plan. That way you don't get bored. That way you stick to your health and fitness goals. One of the the biggest changes in my health and fitness journey or not even my health and fitness journey but just my eating is that I haven't been eating breakfast it's just I can't really eat that early in the morning and now that I'm going back into school I don't like to have something heavy on my stomach first thing in the morning so what I've been doing is having two large meals and a snack a day or maybe two snacks just depending on how I'm feeling this format of eating has been really really helping me it works with my schedule and it is nutritionist approved I've been working like I said heavily with my nutritionist lately and it works for me as long as I'm getting my macros in it doesn't really matter the format and what you eat which leads me to my next point of that I'm not including any of the macros on the screen or down below because my portion sizes change every day since I'm batch cooking so it's not like I'm eating the same thing every day and the measurements are the same they're not so I didn't include any of the macros for any of the meals that I prepared because every day it's a little bit different and that was just like a lot of work but I do a really good job of telling you everything that I'm using so if you guys want to use your calorie and macro trackers to input that information I feel free to do so I just didn't do it because we won't be eating the same thing our bodies are completely different and we need different things so I just wanted to be mindful of that if I do what I eat in a day videos I will gladly do that because you guys can see the daily amount of macros that I'm ingesting but for meal prep videos I just think it's just counterproductive because you don't see every single thing that I eat in a day anyway so that's why I didn't include it and then of course since I'm batch preparing foods I will obviously be showing you at the end of the video the meals that I created out of all of my components that I've made throughout the week any of the items that I prepared off screen things that you did not see me cook I will have a recipe linked down below or in like a little like pdf format so you have the recipe that way but everything else I've included my measurements my spices all of that in the actual video so you should be good to go with that just some questions i want to address before we get into this video because i always 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 get these questions so first things first i don't freeze any of my meals okay because one i eat salads so you can't really freeze salads until it just doesn't work for me i just don't see the point i've had no problems with letting my food sit in the fridge for four to five days i've had no issues at all so i'm going to continue to refrigerate them another question i get is do i take my proteins out of my salads and heat them up if i have time to do so okay fine but I'm really okay with eating cold chicken or cold salmon on my salads also I won't be able to do that with the salads that I prepare in this video as you will see the format of their structure how they're all made so you'll be able to see that in the video but if I take it to work I just eat it cold and that's just that all of my meal prep containers that have the bamboo lids are all from Ross I they're just like very generic they came in a pack of like four or five any of my white containers with the clear lids they're also from Ross came in a pack of 12 also they're very generic all of my glass compartment containers that I'm gonna be 
using at the end of this video for my snacks. They're from Amazon, as well as my mason jars, as well as my spice jars and my spice rack. So I will leave those all linked down below in the description box if any of you guys are interested in checking them out. And then lastly, I always get a question on when do I eat? Like, does it matter what time of day that I eat? I'm currently intermittent fasting and I'm doing the 10-14 method. Usually people do the 16-8 where you fast for 16 hours and you have an eight hour window for eating. I'm doing the 10-14 right now so I can kind of like make sure that I'm getting all of my macros in because I'm really still having a hard time getting protein in. I've been increasing my protein through protein shakes, protein bars, anywhere I can get protein in, I'm gonna do it. And making sure that I'm giving myself large enough portions of protein in my actual meals, snacking intentionally with high protein snacks. Since I'm intermittent fasting for 10 hours, I usually break my fast around 12 o'clock, which is my lunch, which is why I'm not having breakfast. And then my eating window closes at 10 o'clock. I usually don't eat past six or seven o'clock, but I am being really intentional about getting all of my meals in and it's been hard, but it is what it is. So that is everything that I think I needed to cover before we get into this video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. So I like to make meal prepping a little bit easier by always starting with the most time consuming components, which are usually my protein. In today's video, I'm making three types of proteins, which are hard boiled eggs, chicken breasts, and salmon. You already know the drill, but if you don't know how to make hard boiled eggs, it's super, super simple. Just get a large pot, fill it with cold water, and then drop as many eggs in your pot as you would like. Then you're gonna pop them onto the stove and boil for about 10 to 14 minutes, depending on how you like the inside of your egg to look. Moving on to my next protein, I'm gonna be seasoning four super large chicken breasts. I'm so proud of myself for getting these cute little spice jars and the little spice rack your girl is coming up in the world. I'm gonna be using garlic powder, chili powder, black pepper, onion salt, onion powder, cayenne, parsley flakes, and of course some salt. Now you can season to your liking. I'm just showing you the seasonings that I use. I use about a teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half of each, but the chicken was large and we already know that I season with love over here so if it's too much seasoning for you just adjust them to your liking Now that my eggs are done, I'm going to pour out all of the hot water and start rinsing them with cold water and allow them to soak until they've completely cooled before peeling. I find that this method works best for me, but if you know any egg tricks that can help you peel clean eggs, definitely use that method. Back to my chicken. So now that my cast iron skillet is super hot, as you can tell because it's smoking up my house, but I really wanted to get some good color on the chicken before I popped it into the oven. These are really, really large chicken breasts. They're not gonna cook all the way on the stove without burning. So I'm just gonna sear them on both sides until they have really good color on top and bottom. While my chicken breasts are cooking, now I'm gonna start on my salmon. The seasonings I'm using are black pepper, Creole seasoning, parsley, and garlic powder. Again, I season with love over here, but feel free to season to your liking. One thing about this girl is that she's not eating unseasoned food. It's never been for her, nor will it ever be. But do you, girl? I also snuck in a little bit of chili powder because I thought the salmon needed some more color. I'm just gonna pat the seasonings into my salmon fillets using my clean, bare hands, but feel free to put either gloves on or use cooking utensils. Again, my hands are clean. It's my food, I'm the only one eating it, so I don't really mind. Flipping my chicken over, now I'm gonna add some water to the pan. Ideally, your girl would have liked to have added some chicken broth, but I didn't have any in the house, which is completely fine because there's enough seasoning on the chicken to mix with the water that it'll create a nice broth anyway. So I'm just gonna pour some water into my skillet, then pop it into the oven at 350 degrees for about 40 to 45 minutes. Now I'm gonna sear my salmon. I'm really going to sear it low and slow at first so that the skin on the bottom of the salmon gets really crispy. The skin is honestly my favorite part of the salmon so I like to spend a little extra time on it. Then I'll flip it once the skin is crisp and I'll top it off with a little bit of lemon juice and set aside. Before I put anything in the fridge, I always let my cooked food come to room temperature first. So I'm just gonna place my salmon into this glass meal prep container and let it sit out until it's completely cooled. 
My chicken breasts have been out of the oven for about 35 minutes. I let them rest and cool down a bit, so now it's time to slice them and put them into a meal prep container. It's also really important that you let your chicken breasts, or any meat for that matter, that you let it rest after you cook it so that all the juices can redistribute throughout the meat. Now we're getting into some produce prep, so I'm gonna start by cutting up a tomato. I'm gonna chop it into medium pieces and set aside. Next, I'm gonna cut up an entire onion. This half of the onion I'm going to finely dice, but the other half I'm gonna chop so that they're about the same size as the tomatoes I just chopped, and you'll see why later. Now, of course, we have some jalapeno because you know your girl loves spice. I'm gonna slice an entire jalapeno into thin rings, and then I'm gonna finally mince another jalapeno for some pico de gallo that I'm making later. You can definitely remove the seeds and ribs if you'd like, but I like the spice, so I kept them in. Next, we have some Brussels sprouts that I ended up using two bags of, and they're rolling all over the place. I low-key hate that for me, but anyways, I'm just gonna cut off the bulky bottom stem piece and peel back the outer layers and have them, and that's basically it. Asparagus are pretty easy. I just wash them, and now I'm gonna slightly bend them and allow them to snap where they naturally want to snap, separating that hard fiber stalk at the bottom. And finally, I'm just de-stemming some washed curly kale and tearing them into smaller pieces. I'm not gonna cook them today, just prep it for potential dishes throughout the week. Now moving on to cooking my vegetables, I'm gonna start off by spraying my skillet with a little bit of avocado oil or any nonstick cooking spray will work. I'm adding a little bit of minced garlic and of course some red pepper flakes because you know they had to make an appearance at some point. This would not be a meal prep with re if they didn't pop up. Anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and cook the garlic and chili flakes together and then add my washed Brussels sprouts to the pan and saute them until they're soft. I'm gonna season my Brussels sprouts with a little bit of onion salt, some black pepper, and then top them off with a little bit of lemon juice, and that's it. So now that our Brussels sprouts are done, I'm going to transfer them over to a meal prep container and as you can see, they're still very hot, so I'm gonna leave them on my counter to cool down to reach room temperature and then I'll pop them in the fridge for the week. Moving on to our asparagus, again, I'm gonna spray my nonstick skillet and then add some garlic because everything needs garlic and now I'm just going to saute my asparagus spears. I'm seasoning them with a little bit of onion salt and some black pepper and then I'm just gonna top them off with lemon juice because the combo of asparagus and lemon juice is elite. And then I'm just gonna saute them until they get a little bit soft and then I'm gonna transfer them into a meal prep container, allow them to cool completely and then pop them in the fridge. Okay, so now it is pico time, so I'm adding some finely diced tomatoes that I had left over in my fridge, some jalapeno, red onion, and cilantro. Of course, we're adding some minced garlic, and then I'm using black pepper, cumin powder, garlic powder, red chili flakes, and some salt to season. And of course, I have the juice of a lime. I only used one, not two, but you know the drill. Just add all of your ingredients to the bowl, season, mix well, place in a meal prep container, and then hold in the fridge for up to five to seven days.
make some salad dressing. When I tell y'all I was winging it, I mean I was literally just throwing stuff in this blender. But anyway, add the juice of four limes, half of a jalapeno, a teaspoon of garlic, some cilantro, and season with whatever you like. Mine are on the screen. Follow up with some honey and olive oil and blend it until smooth. This dressing, y'all, first of all, it holds really, really well in an airtight container. I've had mine for about a week and it's still so good. But this salad dressing was a 10 out of 10. Like. I was very, very impressed. I'm also not super big on cilantro, but I'm really been trying and like, I kind of like it, but it wasn't overpowering in this dish. So definitely give it a try. And now we're making some mason jar salads, which are my new favorite things. This one is a Greek inspired salad that has layers of red onion, tomatoes, olives, cucumbers, feta cheese, your protein of choice. I use chicken in one and salmon in the other just to, you know, switch it up a little bit. And then I topped it off with some spring mix and that's basically it. You can add your salad dressing of choice at the bottom of your mason jar, but I chose not to do that because I didn't really know what salad dressing I was using with this. I ended up going with the Bolt House Farms balsamic vinaigrette and it was delicious. So for my next salad prep, I'm making a Southwestern inspired chicken salad that has layers of corn, black beans, pico de gallo, jalapenos, chicken, and romaine lettuce. Again, you could have added your salad dressing at the base of the salad. I'm using the cilantro lime salad dressing that I made a couple clips ago, but I chose not to do that. And honestly, 10 out of 10. So this is basically everything that I prepped today and I'm just gonna store everything in the fridge and then throughout the week create different meals using each component. So for my first meal, I'm gonna be using this minute brown rice and quinoa mix because why reinvent the wheel if you don't have to? And I'm just gonna follow the directions on the back of the packet. I ended up making some sauteed lemon garlic kale with chickpeas and I added the rice and quinoa mix and then I just paired it with a little bit of salmon. Honestly, so simple, quick, and good. I had a little bit left over so I prepped my leftovers for the next day's lunch and it was 10 out of 10. <music> My next meal is a Greek salmon bowl, which is basically the Greek salad that I made in the mason jars, but this time I added that same rice and quinoa mixture and it was 10 out of 10. I drizzled it with a little bit of balsamic glaze off camera and I totally forgot to show it, so I apologize, but it was so good and I had leftovers, so I packed the rest away for the next day. Meal three had to be my favorite because it was the simplest. I just heated up my asparagus and Brussels sprouts, paired it with some salmon, and that was literally dinner. You can't go wrong with salmon and veggies. Like, I'm sorry, it just, salmon goes with everything. And the fact that I had leftovers just made my heart so happy. So I just packed it away for the next day. So the final meal that I cycled this week was a chicken burrito bowl. And again, I'm using the cilantro and lime jasmine rice minute rice pack. And I love them because they just make everything so easy. I just followed the directions on the back of the package. And then I assembled my bowl with some lettuce, the rice, some beans, chicken, pico de gallo, and a little bit of cheese. I added some guacamole and ended up drizzling the whole bowl with my cilantro lime dressing that I made earlier in this video. And it was bomb. Here's a little bonus for you guys because I've really been trying to up my protein intake. So I've been making these super quick and easy protein snack boxes that have cucumbers, turkey pepperoni, a little bit of extra sharp cheddar cheese, and a hard boiled egg. I use the Good Thin crackers as my crackers of choice. I used some of the garden veggie and the Parmesan garlic flavors and they were honestly so good. I just really like them because they're so easy, versatile, and delicious. Yeah. 